Hey guys, welcome to MMA One on One. I'm your host, Dan the Wolfman, with the one and only five-time world kickboxing champion, Kathy Long. How's it going? It's very good. I'm good. How are you? Good. <laughs> We're here at Gokur's Highest On Academy in North Hollywood, where I train beautiful school, and today was the Paradise Warrior Retreat. You can go, go to their website, paradisewarriorretreat.com, seminars with tons of the top uh, UFC fighters and trainers. Mr. Rafael Cordero was here today. I think Benny Legette was teaching earlier. Yes, right? he was. And um, Cub Swanson taught earlier. Fabricio Verdum is going to be here tomorrow. Uh, I think with Sergio Pettis, too. So, I mean, guys, you can look into that. Come tomorrow if I get this up online in time. And uh, Kathy Long's here. What are you doing here? You're supporting and training? And I'm supporting and training and learning. Um, I'm not one to think that I know everything. So there's always room to learn more stuff. Are there, is there anything particularly you liked uh, uh, learning today? Any tricky setups or combinations or anything? You know, some you of the scrambles enjoy? that Cub, I'm sorry for interrupting you, yeah. but some of the scrambles that Cub was uh, covering today was really good because I'm the kind of person that would like to get up. Um, I don't want to stay on the ground with somebody if I don't have to, so he was working a lot of from half guard or, or full guard getting out of the getting out of that position, oh, which is great. And, of course, go for his leg locks. Yeah, oh, he's, Who can that, the best right? guy, right? It was a fantastic reminder of what I had learned years ago. Okay. And um, now it's back into my repertoire, and I'm going to be practicing it like crazy. And we'll see uh, how I do on my next fight. Next fight? Next fight. What next fight? Uh, I'm, I hope to be fighting for Invicta. John McCarthy is opening the door for me. Oh, awesome. I love, my I love door. Invicta. I love Shannon Knapp. I talked to her on Facebook. Yep. Shannon, hey. Shannon, hey. <laughs> and... Uh, that's great. Any idea who you're going to be fighting? MMA again. MMA again. I really don't know and honestly don't care. Uh, what weight do you know? Where you're 125. Going okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, uh, we got some good girls at 125. I think Leslie Smith is fighting their December card. Is she 125 or 115? I'm not sure. Leslie okay. Smith is really tough stand-up fighter, just kind of um, rapid-fire punches, high-volume striker. Good deal. There's some, there's some really good striking girls at 125, I think. Awesome. Looking so, forward to it. <laughs> so you had one MMA fight before. That was yes. a while back. Back what, in 09. What's making you want to get out there and do this again? Well, I... After my fight in 09, I took a little bit of a hiatus. Um, then I went, got back into training. I was at CSW with Eric Paulson, and I got my knee injured. Okay. And uh, it took me months to scrape together money for surgery. And then, of course, months and months of recovery, and then I had a breakup of a long relationship. And, you know, years go by, and then I think, wait a minute, what is wrong here? My knee is 100%. What am I doing? So, you know, I've got an itch. You like competing. You got the I, itch, you got the fire back, and you want to do it again. Huh? Absolutely. Was MMA more fun to you than, than kickboxing? Is it great, just everything's open? Every, MMA is, like, world's better than Muay Thai. Really? The universe is better than Muay Thai <laughs> because there's so much you can do. There's so much you can learn. There is so much um, that I don't know, yeah. and that's the beauty of it. You know, the more I do, the more I learn, the better I will get, and I know in this game I'm just scratching the surface yeah. on what I need to know. And that's the challenge. You know, the, the more afraid I am, ladies, the faster and harder I hit. <laughs> well, okay. There are, there, there's, there's like a Miriam Nakamoto's great Muay Thai fighter. She's uh, done well in Invicta. She's 2-0 in Invicta. So, I, I mean, there are some great strikers. They learn enough of the grappling game, framing the neck, getting the hips back, defending the takedowns. You can do really, really well. And um, I'm, I'm assuming you've kind of dabbled. You've done a lot of self-defense stuff. Did you dabble in grappling with, like, like Gene LaBelle or Benny the Jet in the past, before your first MMA fight, before you got a little more serious about the grappling, did you always kind of have a little bit of background? I started um, learning grappling in 1994. Okay. I trained with uh, Jean-Jacques for eight months and then got busy and then hit the gym. Hit, it was hit and miss for a long time. For many years, it was, you know, trained sometimes and not trained sometimes. But the basics are cemented in my muscle memory. In that respect, I don't have to worry about it. But in regards to MMA, um, that's where there are holes in my repertoire mm -hmm. that I'm filling now and uh, okay. rapidly. Did you get more? You, did you train with Gokar for the first time in my fight? I did. I trained with Gokar and Batiste Mansouri and Romeo Rem. Okay, I know Batiste. Yeah. I just uploaded some pictures he loved from like 15 years ago of him heel, heel hooking Richmond Serrano. You know, it was, so. yeah. <laughs> it was back and forth from Millennia to Gokar's place, and okay. those were my two main gyms. And then you got some training in with Eric Paulson, too. Was after, my, awesome. after my first MMA fight, okay. then I started training with Eric. Oh, very good. So you've got you've got some pretty good background, and now you just got to sharpen the tools and I do. remember some things. And yes, kinda. yes, reacquaint myself with all kinds of fun stuff. <laughs> it is fun stuff. <laughs> yes. when you put it all together. Um, wow, that's very exciting. How many kickboxing fights did we have? 
I think officially on record is you know 23 one and one, but I've I've had several in Mexico. So honestly, the record is probably 32 one and one. Wow. Okay. One loss, one draw. What got you? How did you start in the martial arts? What was your background originally like? I had a friend in high school doing Aikido, and she invited me to a class, and I I loved it. I didn't love the Aikido necessarily. Mm -hmm. What I really loved was the family structure that it held. Okay. And the, the instructor was somebody who really welcomed everybody and treated everybody like family. And I didn't have that family structure at home, mm -hmm. so I clung to that. And as a result, I clung to martial arts because everywhere I went in the world, it didn't matter. If you did martial arts, you were part of their family. It didn't matter what martial yeah. arts you did, you were part of their family. And something that you know a lot of people don't realize, a lot of MMA gyms do have a very good family environment. People think, wow, it's a wild cage sighting stuff. Until you go, they have, probably have kids' classes, they probably have classes for the family and women and all kinds of things. And I think people sometimes have a misconception, oh, that's not for me. They see the fighters at the gym, they don't realize there's classes for everybody. There really is fight classes for everybody. I mean, even the people who never want to fight, they just want to come in and get in great shape. I mean, look at the, all the UFC gyms that are opening up. They don't necessarily have fight teams coming out of there. But they've got people who are highly skilled and training hard. After the, after the Aikido, how, did you then start dabbling like, like Taekwondo and Karate? Or what was your stand-up background? How did you, you get Well, I got into Kung Fu Sun Tzu, which is very brutal. It's stick your fingers in the eye, hit them in the windpipe, mm -hmm. stomp on their knee, crush their testicles. Things you don't compete with in a fight. But you retrain so, really, so realistically. Um, I would see karate tournaments and I would never want to compete in them because... They teach you to purposely miss a, miss a punch. They miss you, you miss the target. You, work, you use the wrong hand configurations for striking targets. Hopping back fast to get a point and stuff like that. Right. I mean, back knuckles to the forehead, which are going to hurt your hand and them. But, you know, in that respect, um, there was a girl who did karate. She would constantly challenge me to do karate with her. And I said, I don't do that stuff. You want to fight? Let's go out back. <laughs> right? <laughs> But what I didn't know is that she had done kickboxing for a couple of years, okay. and then her coach challenged my coach and asked me if I'd be willing to do an exhibition kickboxing match with her. Ten days before the event, they asked me. I never knew. I, I never learned how to throw boxes, boxing punches, so I went into a boxing gym, and for ten days, I learned <laughs> how to punch like a boxer would. I'd been watching boxing all my yeah. life, but um, that was my first introduction to Muay Thai. So she weighed 190, I weighed 120. Wow. Yeah, and we beat the snot out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> it was just brutal. But I discovered an awful lot about myself that day, and I was hooked. I was hooked on the adrenaline rush. That sounds Nothing fun. Nothing had scared me. You can't before. find that fight on YouTube, can you? Has anyone got an old VHS copy of that? I do. You do? I have a VHS copy. <laughs> <laughs> I like finding this old stuff and putting it up on YouTube. And but you know what? I have... I will put it on DVD for him. I'll give it to you. You okay. want to put it on YouTube, you're welcome to. I would like to. I Everyone. think people get a kick out of some of the stuff you see. Wow, what were people doing back? Like I found this tournament in Hong Kong, like the real like blood sport from 1981. Right. And people are going crazy over it because the refs allowed some ground fighting, but they didn't know what to do. And there was a soccer kick ending in it. And, like <laughs> it, it was really like UFC Number 11 one. years yeah, before, <laughs> which you called. Right. Right. Well, I forgot and, about that. And you that and, was a goat rope. You and Jim Brown. You know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was a total goat rope because nobody knew the rules and nobody knew what to do with the rules. And the boxers in the rules meeting going, well, I can wrap my hands. Should I wear one glove or no? I mean, <laughs> Our I don't know what to do. Glove. He didn't know what to do. Nobody knew what to do. I mean, nobody knew the rules. What was commentating that like? Was it just this wild experience? Yeah. It was a wild goat rope. But I mean, I watched a tooth fly by me as got, somebody got hit in the mouth. And, but I think at the time, I was a little, I wasn't turned off by the violence of mm -hmm. it. Because in Kung Fu Sun Tzu, it's very violent. Right. And I've been in, you know, I bounced in a bar for two and a half years, and I fought every night I worked, three wow. nights a week, for two and a half years. You do the math. Kathy Vaughn, I hope you like me. You kind of worry me a little no, bit. No, but you got to understand, <laughs> when you're dealing with people your size who are yeah. drunk and belligerent. you got to get right. serious. You fast. can't just hit them in the face and knock them down. You can't just grab them and throw them out. You have to stick your fingers in their eye. You have to hit them in the windpipe. You have to crush their testicles. That's what I came from. Well, ladies, if you need some self-defense lessons, <laughs> I think this is the lady for you. Well, in that respect. But um, UFC, you know, we were talking about how it's kind of got a bad rap. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, it was very violent. It yeah, two and then three rules. Even growing hits were allowed in a couple of them. So, yeah, right. and now there's like 37, maybe more rules. So It's, it's, it's become, it's evolved to something, I think, really beautiful mm -hmm. in that... It does pit your skills. You know, you, if you're not well-rounded, 
you will get eaten alive, basically. Like, right now, everybody knows me as the stand-up fighter. They don't know that I've been doing jiu-jitsu since 1994. That's great. <laughs> I can't wait to see you in Invicta. I think um, you're still a, a big name and a pioneer in women's fighting, and Invicta's taken it to the next level, you know, getting on pay-per-view now. And, and I've, been, I've been a huge go supporter. <laughs> yeah, go Shannon. I mean, I, I covered the first Hook and Shoe Revolution, which was the first all-women's card wow, in really? the U.S. back in, like, 2002, I think, um, oh. Jeff Osborne's uh, Hook and Shoe. So I, I just love the female MMA, WMMA world, and uh, it's been a pleasure talking to Thank you. you. Um, any, uh, any websites or anything like that that you'd like to plug? Um, gosh. Um, Gokor School. Yeah, go to gokor.com, guys. Tap Out LA. That's my home. Thank you, Tap Out. Um, you know, Eric Paulson with CSW. And soon to be uh, Rafael. Yeah, Raf Master Rafael Codero, Kings MMA. You're gonna train yeah. with him. He's my favorite striking coach. Goku is my favorite grappling coach. You know, I, I really loved what he presented today, and it's right up my alley. It's the way I think. It's the way I feel about stand up, and and he's gonna incorporate that for my MMA. I'm so excited. Great. I really Thank you so much, guys. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time.